Hi, it's Trina, and this is Beauty Beyond 40. Today's video is going to be all about makeup. I have been wanting to do this video for such a long time. A few months ago, I saw Angie of Hot and Flashy on YouTube do this lifting makeup tutorial where she showed do's and don'ts for mature skin. In today's video, I'm gonna do a full face tutorial showing you how to get your makeup to help as you get older to uplift your face or give you a makeup facelift, if you will. On one side of my face, I'm gonna show you probably the traditional way that you've done your makeup. And on the other side of my face, I'm gonna show you my tips and tricks for getting that uplifted look that will help to make your jawline look more lifted, help to make your cheeks look more lifted, help to make your eyes look more lifted. And the overall effect in the end will be a more youthful look, a more confident you if you feel like your makeup is working for you instead of against you. Angie just turned 60. She looks amazing. I hope I look as amazing as her. When I turn 60, I am 47 now. I'm gonna do my makeup alongside Angie to show how her techniques look on my face and to show how I incorporate her tips and I'm gonna do one side of my face the downturned way and the other side of my face the lifted way. And what prompted me to make this video was a few months ago I went to an event in Los Angeles where a makeup artist was doing our makeup to show off some new products that had launched. Most of the attendees were in their 20s, much younger than me. The makeup artist was also in her 20s and I watched her do my makeup and inside I was cringing because she was doing my makeup as if I had 20 year old skin and she just kind of seemed like she was on autopilot just doing all of these things that you would do to a 20 year old's face that weren't working for my skin. And afterwards I went to the mirror and I looked at my skin and I looked really old. Like there was makeup settling in all the fine lines around my eyes and it just wasn't customized for an aging or mature face. So I saw Angie's video pop into my feed a couple weeks after that event and I was like, oh, that's what happened. The makeup artist was doing trends and application on my face as if I were a lot younger and those techniques just don't work anymore as we get older. So I'm really excited to do this video for you today. Makeup isn't normally the kind of content that I produce. I really do love makeup. So let me know if you want me to do more makeup videos. So let's get into this makeup tutorial. I'm gonna play parts of Angie's video throughout my video just to try out her techniques and show you in real time how I'm incorporating. All of the products that I'm using today will be linked down in the description box below. So if you're interested in shopping any of them, head down to the description. So I'm going to start off by putting my Yensa foundation, the super serum silk foundation. She just puts the same foundation on both sides of her face as a starting point. So I will do the same. I'm going to just use my favorite beauty pie brush for foundation. This one gets a lot of wear. You can see it's like broken off, but I just keep washing it and using it because I love it. This is gonna be my don't side and this is gonna be my do side. So on this side, the don't side, I'm going to apply with my favorite concealer. This is my e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. It's really, really hydrating and I love how it makes my eyes look really hydrated. It doesn't settle into my fine lines. I'm going to, in the don't side, just place a big swatch of concealer all the way underneath my eye. And this is what they did at that event. I watched her put this on and I was like, don't do it and I didn't say anything but I should have I should have told her because I know my skin and this was not gonna look good and I'm gonna use my moda brush that I always use to blend in my concealer it's got these really fine bristles that I love and so I'm going to just blend this in all the way under my eye this thick concealer now this is on when I smile it starts to crease up. This whole area has so much concealer and when I smile, you can see all of my fine lines and this is what I noticed at that event. How I would do it on the do side is I actually have some color corrector from Pixie. It's this peach color, it's called Brightening Peach. And I just put a little bit of this color corrector. I take some on my ring finger and I just tap it in just where I have darkness. So just where I have darkness here in the corner I think you can already see that's looking better than the don't side. And then I take the tiniest amount of concealer. This is really, really pigmented, so you don't need a lot. And I just put a tiny dot like right in the corner. And then I normally don't do this, but Angie says to put like a little bit here to give like a lifting effect. So that's something new for me. I don't normally do that because I don't want to put any concealer where I have fine lines, but I see a lot of people do this and they say that it 
gives like a lifting effect like where you're drawing light to the area that you're brightening up and it's making it look brighter and more lifted so let's give it a try again I use the same brush and I just tap it in really really lightly just in the area where I'm trying to cover in the corner and then I'll do the same here the little lifting effect on the corner of my eye and already I can you see this I can see when I look in the mirror already like this eye is already looking like wrinkly and heavy and old and this is looking so much better okay next i like to set my under eye on the dew side so i have this fit glow beauty instantly blurring bamboo hyaluronic loose setting powder and i love to use this under my eyes only because it has a hydrating effect because of the hyaluronic acid i really like it and i have this special brush that i use just to put powder under my eyes it's called concealer perfecting brush and i'm gonna just set this underneath my dew eye and i just find that this makes my eye looks so much better. It already looks like so much better. Let me see if I can like zoom in so you can see the difference in my eyes. Now I like to set the powder all over my face. I have oily combination skin, so I'm gonna go ahead and use setting powder on the dew side of my face. This is just my Anastasia Beverly Hills translucent powder. And I have a rare beauty brush that I like to use just to place some of this powder on and it's just a translucent powder. I just dust it really, really lightly because I don't want to look cakey. I don't want it to settle into my fine lines. I'm really just trying to set my makeup. So I'm doing that on the dew side. Before we put on eyeshadow, I always recommend an eyelid primer. I have my eyeshadow primer from Rare Beauty that I love. She puts this on both lids. So I will go ahead and do the same. And I just put a little bit, a little bit on each eyelid and then I just tap it in with my ring finger. This creates a really nice canvas for your eyeshadow and helps the eyeshadow to lay on really nicely and helps it to stay on longer. And also I think it helps to minimize fallout of the shadows. So today I'm gonna use this Tarte palette that I have. It's called Clay Play, it's pretty old, but I just really love the colors on here for this demonstration today. This is a really, really nice palette. It has bronzers and it has eyeshadows. I really like this one for a really neutral look. I'm gonna take my A501 lid shader brush. I'm gonna dip it in this light color here in the palette. And I'm gonna pack that all over my movable lid, but I'm gonna carry it up underneath my brow bone. I'm going to take this lighter color called Solstice here, this one here, and I'm going to Place it all the way on my lid from the bottom of my lid all the way to the top. And I'm gonna go in with this shade, Quarry Days. I'm gonna just run it along my actual crease line. So we're gonna go from the inner corner all the way out to the outer corner, and we're gonna apply it at the base of the outer corner of the eye. And this is where you don't want to be putting your eyeshadow because putting your eyeshadow down here is going to drag your eye down. So let me just show you those two steps on this side to show you what I would do to improve that. Instead of using the whitest color, I'm going to go in the next color over, which is still a very light color, but this one is called Trip. And I'm going to take that one and I am going to pat that all over the movable part of the lid. And I'm going to take it up into the crease. If you have a lot of discolorations on your eyelid and you want to coat your whole eyelid with a color, then this is a great color to do that with because it matches kind of my skin tone. So we can actually bring this all the way up to the eyebrow, but because it's not white and it's not shimmery, it's a matte tone, it's not going to make this piece of skin pop forward. So I love how she shows this technique because I also have hooded eyes and I'm always trying to lift my eyes and I don't want my eyes to look closed so I like how we're doing this technique where we're going above the crease. I'm gonna go back into the same color quarry days but this time instead of putting it directly into the crease we're gonna keep it above the crease. If you take your makeup mirror and you just look down into it instead of looking straight into it that will close your eye down a little bit and with your eye closed down a little bit, you can see where that crease is, and then you can put your eyeshadow above it. 
So we're just going to put that right above. We're not going to come down here. We're going to start it a little bit higher between the eyelid and the brow. And with just tiny, tiny, small strokes, we're going to work that across following the curve of the crease, but we're staying above the crease so that our actual eyelid looks bigger. And this shouldn't be too dark of a color. This should be a color that's maybe two shades darker than your natural skin tone. So it will look very natural. So now that you've got it on there, you can see kind of where the edge of it is here. And you want to actually bring that up a little bit higher out here. And you want this line to kind of go up towards your eyebrow. So you want to bring this kind of up at an angle and then bring it across a little bit. And that's going to help to lift that up. And then if you find that this is puffing forward, you can put a little bit of that right in there. And I'm holding my brush by the very end. So that gives me a lighter, more feathery stroke because I want everything to be beautifully blended. I don't want any hard edges, but I want everything to be lifting up. Okay. Now I'm going to take my A503 brush and I'm just going to blend that just to make sure that we don't have any hard lines, get it up a little higher. Next, I'm going to go with my A504 brush. I'm going to dip into one of the darker shades in the palette. Um, I think I'll go with this one right here. It's a pretty color. So I'm just going to pick that up on the tips of the bristles, bang it off a little bit, and I'm going to put this on the movable part of my lid so that this is basically like keeping it too low and darkening up this part of my lid. I'm bringing it down to the outer corner of my eye so that that's going to drag our eye down. Then using the same brush, same color. On this eye, I'm going to apply it to almost the same place, but instead of doing it low, I'm going to start high and drag it down to my lashes at an angle. So I'm going to start way up here in the crease. I'm going to draw that imaginary line from the corner of my eye up to the corner of my eyebrow. I'm going to keep it inside there and I'm going to start it right here in the crease. I'm going to drag it down to my eyelashes at an angle. Let me just go over that again and darken it up a little bit. So you could keep this matte and it looks good, but to really make the lid pop, I like to use a little bit of a shimmer. So for that, I'm going to go in with my A505 brush and I'm going to dip into this color baby doll. For this, I'm just going to take some shimmer from this hourglass palette and place it where she's doing it. I'll go in with the center one here. All right, let's go ahead and do our eyeliner next. I know a lot of these kind of tutorials tell you not to use black eyeliner anymore now that you're older because it's too harsh. I personally don't like to use black eyeliner and prefer to use something softer. I'm gonna use this pencil that I love from NYX. It is Golden Olive. It's a really pretty color for my eye color and it looks like this. And for the don't side, I'm gonna just line the top here and I'm gonna pull the wing down a little bit like she does in the video. This is hard to do with one hand. Normally I would do it a little bit differently. And then for the other eye, starting in the center, and then when I get to the edge of my eye, I draw a wing up to follow where I did my shadow, this is what I always do. I do a wing up because I have hooded eyes. I would never pull a wing down. I would ever draw downward. I would pull it up to match the line that I did with my eyeshadow. And then I just use my finger to kind of blend it out and I can use this brush again to blend it in a little bit if I need to. And I can make it a little longer if I want. And normally I would just put a little bit underneath my eye here. Very, very thin line on the dew side. I would put a very, very thin line and just blend it in with my finger. And then on the don't side, I would draw it all the way across my eye. I close my eye a little bit by drawing it too far inward. Like I only do the outer corner on the do side and on the don't side, 
I'm doing it a little bit thicker and I'm doing it all the way in. Now you can see really clearly how this eye is looking much more lifted and open and this one is looking more closed and hooded and sad. Let's go ahead in with our mascara. I'm gonna use my Rare Beauty mascara and I'm gonna follow the same technique that she does on the good eye. I'm going to put a thin layer of mascara and focus on the outer section. I don't put it on my bottom lashes, maybe just a little bit on the outer section is okay, but for the most part, I skip that area and then I'll put another coat. I do like to get more mascara out here and almost make it like a winged out effect on the do eye and on the less than optimal eye, I'll do like all the way around. On the don't eye, I put a thick layer of mascara all the way around my eye, including the inner corner and the bottom lashes as well. Next, let's move on to brows, and I'm going to use my Benefit Cosmetics Precisely My Brow Pencil as a starting point. And this product I love because it has a spoolie on one side to brush your brows out, and then it has a thin pencil on the other side, which I like because I can get a precise application. I will just brush my brows up and I'm just gonna fill it in and I'm gonna leave it pretty high up here. I'm gonna leave it like this. And on the don't side, I'm going to start filling it in on the inner corner as opposed to the center where I normally start filling in my brows. And then I'm just gonna draw it in and I'm gonna bring it down too far. I'm going to bring it down too far and it's going to close up my eye area. I'll just finish this. Bringing it down. So on the do eye, I'm going to show you what I normally do is I have this elf shape and stay brow wax that I use because my brow hairs go downward and I'm always trying to lift them up. So on the do eye, I'm going to show you how I use this to really lift up these hairs and get them to stay in place. I find that gives my eye a much more lifted effect. I love this stuff. I finished off with some clear brow gel from Benefit to keep my brows in place again because they do turn downward and I like to keep them up. All right, let's move on to the face. I'm gonna use my Physician's Formula Butter Glow Face Palette just for the bronzer in here. On the less than optimal side, the way that you've been told to do it in the past is to make the old fish face. And pretty much contour this whole thing out, right? I'm gonna use my Tarte palette again because there's these really great bronzers here um, at the bottom, my Hourglass Cosmetics brush that I love that I'm gonna do the bronzer with and lightly apply some on the don't side. Unfortunately, put your contour way down here and it makes your whole face look muddy. The other thing that we had been told, and I don't really hear this one as much anymore, thank goodness, is to make a three shape. So you start up in your brow and you bring it into your temple and then you bring it down here, right? Making that fish face. Problem is that as we get older, a lot of us get a little bit hollow in the temples. And so, as I said before, shadow is gonna make it look even darker and recede more and look more hollow. So you don't really wanna put bronzer or contour into that hollow. I mean, people spend a lot of money getting filler in there, right? So you don't want to put it there. On the other side, the way to actually lift your face is if you want to do your forehead, that's fine. Do that separate. Don't try to make like a shape that's going to encompass your whole face. But I start high in my hair, kind of at the corner, because this is where I want it to be the darkest. And I just start wiggling it in there. And then I just almost make an angled line from my part over here to like the corner. And this will be different for everyone's face. Everyone's face is a different shape. I would just keep it out of the temple here. And then for your cheek sculpting, you wanna put that a lot higher. And instead of using the brush as wide as it is, I like to pinch it down so that I'm making more of a line that's a little bit up higher. So I'm just making it more precise. You could use a smaller brush for this, but I already have this one. I wanna use the same brush. So instead of putting it under my cheekbone, I'm gonna put it at my cheekbone, okay? So my cheekbone is here, and so I'm gonna put it at my cheekbone, and I'm not gonna bring it super far forward. I'm actually gonna curve it up here to really lift and carve out that cheek and make it look round out there. And then I'm just gonna take whatever's left on the brush 
And we're just going to use that ever so gently to blend that out. We generally will have a little bit of sagging at the jaw. The way most people tell you to do it is to just put it underneath your jaw. You want to contour along the edge of your jaw. But when you get here to where your sagging is, you want to come up a little higher. You want to put it on that spot where it bumps down a little bit. For the blush, I'm going back to my brush set. I'm using the A507 blush brush, really beautiful angled blush brush, so nice and fluffy. I'm gonna use this ColourPop pressed powder blush in Let's Dance. What do they tell you? Smile, find the apple of your cheek, put your blush there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. There's the apple of my cheek, putting my blush there. And when I let my smile down, where's my blush? It's way down here. You want to start your blush at the back and high, high up on your cheekbone and bring it forward. I'm going to start with the brush facing sideways and I'm going to start back in my hairline and I'm going to bring it forward. And then once I get out here, I turn my brush so that it's going more up and down and I just give it these nice feathery strokes. You want to keep your blush up here on the top of your cheekbone. Even if you, instead of approaching it from down here, approach it from up here, that's going to be much better and it's going to give you this really lifted cheek effect instead of this lower cheek that's, you know, where it doesn't belong. So let's go ahead with highlighter. I'm going to use the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter and for that I have this Sephora Pro Highlight number 87 brush. I'm just going to put it up here. So then on this side, I'm, I'm going to start up there as well because we want to create that uplift. So I'm going to start it up here. I'm going to bring it forward. And this again is super high. So come at it from a high angle and then come down. But once we get to the front, I'm going to put it on the front of my cheek where that apple of my cheek is and make that really round and nice. And look at how that just makes my cheek pop forward. Now, I mentioned before that you could put your concealer here to really carve out that eyeliner, but you can also put in a little bit here. And I'm just gonna put like a dot of it up here, a little bit right here. And I'm gonna go back in with my A506 concealer brush, just something that's gonna help to really pull this area right up is to have a lighter color that just creates this shaft of light right up there. And look how pretty and filled out that looks versus more concave on this side. Okay, next we're gonna move on to lips. I'm gonna use my Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat Pencil in Pillow Talk. I really love this pencil. It's a really natural look. And on the don't side, I'm gonna line my lip from the top and I'm gonna drag it all the way down to the end of my lip, to the edge. Same thing on the other side. Whereas on the other side, the do side, I'm gonna line it slightly overline it, but I'm not gonna go all the way to the end. I'm gonna stop before I get to the end. Same thing as the bottom, I start in the middle, overline it a little bit, and then stop before I get to the end. Okay, I'm gonna fill in my lips with this Rare Beauty lipstick. It's a nice nude color. I will link it down in the description, the actual shade. And I'm gonna fill in the lip as I've outlined it. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of this Fenty Beauty Heat lip gloss on just the dew side, just to give it a little bit more plump and shine just in the middle to accentuate my lips a little bit and make it look a little bit more glossy because that lipstick is pretty matte. Okay, so we are done with this tutorial. Thank you so much, Angie. Let's start with the don't side. So here's the don't side. And then here's the do side. I think that's pretty amazing how just a few technique changes as you get older can really help to lift up your face and makeup really can change the way your face looks. So I think this is really cool. If you have any techniques or tips to share, please leave them down in the comments below. I know the next time that I go get my makeup done when I'm sitting in the makeup chair, for any reason, I'm going to ask them to use these tips. 
for sure the number one thing I'm gonna ask for is to not put all this concealer underneath my eye and just make my eye look really heavy and old and wrinkly. <laughs> That's the number one thing, but the rest of the tips I think are really helpful as well. So thank you so much for watching. Um, thank you, Angie, for sharing all of your tips with us. And if you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you would give it a like, leave a comment, share with a friend, and make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my videos. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.